Hello, in this session we will talk about evolution of business intelligence. This is Hassan Mir from 02protraining.com. So what is the objective of business intelligence? It serves the purpose to help you make informed decisions. The need to make an informed decision is not something new that emerged recently. This need has been there since the beginning of time. In the past, most decisions were made based on gut feelings, not based on the actual information. However, with the passage of time, gradually things have changed and these days most decisions are made based on the information that is extracted from the raw data and very few decisions are still made based on gut feelings. Now, the information that is extracted from the raw data is made possible by the business intelligence tools and this is what we have covered in detail in the previous session where we talked about what is business intelligence. The term business intelligence was first used in 1958 however in the sense in which currently the term business intelligence was used it started happening since 1990s. We understand from the previous session that business intelligence is not really a name of a software or a breed of software it is name of an approach that may include business procedures or technology itself. Now we're talking about specifically technology here in this session. So from technology perspective business intelligence was born in 1990s. Before that different methods were used to extract useful information from the raw data. Past it was very expensive and time-consuming to get access to the right data first of all and even when you have access then to extract useful information from the data was not very easy and that was one of the reason why most decisions were not based on the actual information so we understand that most of the decisions were made not based on the actual information but on the gut feelings because the actual information was not available readily and what is the actual information we're talking about most of the information would come in shape of reports and spreadsheets. Let's talk about reports. It was not like how you can generate reports in today's era on demand. Reports would be mostly printed periodically at certain schedule and if the seeded reports are not meeting your requirements then you have to wait for weeks or even months for IT to create a custom report for you. Spreadsheets are the best software to do the analysis on the numbers. However, these days most reports are exported into Excel sheet. In the past, this wasn't easy. A spreadsheet has to be manually created by performing data entry and most of the entry were done by analyst. Once they receive numbers from, let's say, salespeople, they will enter the data into the spreadsheet and the spreadsheet sheet would be ready for analysis and there was always room for human errors and discrepancies. Also you need to understand that in those days in the past managers were very close to the market and markets were not changing with the same speed as they are doing today. So that made them possible to make most of the decisions based on their feelings. Reports were not available on demand and they were run periodically at certain schedules so at the time of decision the data was not always fresh and also there was a little bit of distrust as well on the reports because as already we have talked about some data entry component was also involved in the reporting. Business intelligence projects are slightly different than implementation of any other application because in this project you are asking users to change the way they are making decisions and users are very much dependent on the legacy systems on the old ways of making decisions. So the new system that you're implementing has to be easier to use than the old system otherwise there's a risk of failure and this risk of failure is attributed to a phenomena that you can call hold to the old system and this resistance is little more in business intelligence projects than in any other application. Now at a really high level this is how the evolution took place. First decision support systems came into the picture in 1960s when it was realized okay 
some kind of system has to be created to extract useful information from the raw data so this was the first generation and then they were modified to something that is, no, that is known to be called as executive information systems and finally in 1990s business intelligence systems came into the picture so 1960s was a time for decision support systems 1980s was the time for executive information systems and then in 1990s business intelligence systems came into the picture so let's talk about decision support systems so before we talk about decision support systems first imagine different departments of a company let's say receivables department which is responsible for managing customers payables department that is responsible for managing suppliers and so on so each of the department would be running its own system mainly on mainframes but the point is that they will have their own databases own applications running disconnected from each other and there was a need to extract raw inf useful information from this raw data that is sitting on each of the system so this resulted into something called decision support system so imagine the output of decision support system as as a form on which you have different parameters let's say you have a parameter called month and maybe a cost center so you can sh say okay show me all the expenses that incurred in this cost center and for this period and so on so a user can change the values in the parameter and, and the data dis being displayed on the screen will change accordingly so the DSS decision support systems were definitely easier to use than paper reports because paper reports were batch processing you would run a report it will go in a queue then you will wait for the report to be completed in most cases reports were run on only on a scheduled basis now important point to note here is that a decision support system will display data only for a particular system so a receivables department will only display receivable invoices that you have sent to the customers it will not display the sales order that it that was related to that invoice and that resulted into that invoice for that you need to connect to the decision support system for the sales department which was not very convenient here you can see each department is running their own system and each system is connected to their own database so DSS would be displaying useful information coming from one system only to see the useful information in another system you need to connect to their DSS if it is available decision support systems did solve some of the problems but few problems were still on the table the data could not be displayed from across the systems and some graphical features were not available where you can see the charts and graphs and make predictions etc these limitations were the basis for the evolution of executive information systems EIS they were expensive to implement so not most companies could afford them but the salient feature would include reading of data from multiple sources not necessarily all the sources but more than one source and sometimes data from external sources could also be read some advanced features were also incorporated in this breed of software like graphs and charts etc executive information systems were designed to be mainly used by the managers and executives of the companies they were not created for the analysts and clerks and the end users in the company so that was the main drawback of these systems they were designed for executive only however it is well understood these days that a business intelligence is something that is required by most business users the limitations of executive information systems and decision support systems led to the creation of business intelligence systems however there were other factors that expedited the creation of the new breed of business intelligence systems and they acted as catalyst and these factors I'll discuss in a little bit detail in the next session with the passage of time globalization increased companies were more and more going global and they needed a system where they could see information from different sources silos would not work anymore like 
decision support systems and even executive information systems even though executive inf information system will combine information from some sources but at the back end databases were still separate and that was creating problems in providing true business intelligence to the users. The term business intelligence entered the scene in 1990s in this sense and now it is a must requirement for any company to have some kind of a business intelligence technology. However, still today only 25% of employees make use of a business in intelligence tools on a regular basis and this ratio is likely to get better in future mainly because of in-memory databases coming into the scene and also the business intelligence technology has entered into the smartphone market. The client software are available in shape of apps for, for example, iPhone, iPad, etc.